life 
And when those times of weakness come, you're to be looking to Jesus. We're to be looking unto the Lord Jesus, not to ourselves, not to our own abilities, not to our own uh, uh, um, our own power, our own willpower. No, it's looking to the Lord, and it's relying upon His strength. Saying, Lord, I cannot do this on my own. That's a, a humble heart that says that. I can't do this on my own, Lord. It's not in my own strength. But Lord, it's you. I'm looking unto you. How I'm going to run this race with endurance. How I'm not going to be ensnared. How I'm not going to be tripped up. How I'm not going to be weighted down, Lord God. is by looking to you. Because I can't do this on my own. In my own strength, I'm going to be weighed down. In my own strength, I sin. In my own strength, I fail. In my own strength, I have no endurance. But Lord, in your strength is how we overcome. In your strength, Lord Jesus, is how we're able to, to uh, uh, run this race with endurance. How we're able to run this race strong. How we're able to run this strength full of the life of God. It's not by our abilities. It's not by our own strength, church. I must stress this. It's by our lives. Lord Jesus Christ. It's upon looking to Him. When you, when a problem comes your way, you stop looking at that problem and you look to Him. It doesn't mean that you ignore it, but it means you say, Lord, I, I don't know how to deal with this, but I know you do. I know you know how to get me through this. I don't know how. If I knew how to do it on my own, I wouldn't have this problem. But obviously I don't. And only you can help me. Only you can get me through this. Only you are my strength. And so the word of God tells us we're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he wasn't sad about going to the cross, church. He wasn't depressed. He wasn't suicidal. I've seen it but the, I've said this before and I'll say it again as we talk through it. Jesus at the cross, the when he says to the Father, he says, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He doesn't mean he didn't want to die for us, church. The Bible says in Hebrews, here, the joy that was set before him, he, what, what was that joy? The church. That people would be saved. That people were, that you and I were going to come into salvation because of what he was going to do. That he, that Peter tells us, that this is what Peter tells us, that, that Jesus, he did this to bring us to God. The intent of the heart of the Father, the intent of the heart of Jesus, his son, was to bring mankind back into a relationship with God. And only God could die for his creation, and this is what he did. He wasn't sad about it. It was joy. Joy knowing that people were going to be saved. Knowing that one day that Bill, Bill was going to be saved. Knowing one day that Dan Kenny was going to be saved. Knowing one day that Benjamin was going to be saved. That knowing one day that Irene was going to be saved. Knowing one day that James was going to be saved. That, the, that all the people, all the people upon the name of the Lord is saved. This is the joy that was set before him. So what we are to do, church, when, when we, even in this moment of communion, I want to encourage you, we're looking to Jesus. Don't look to yourself. If you didn't have a great week this week, then, then don't, definitely don't look to this past week. If you had a great week, you still look to Jesus. We can take these elements. We, we don't, don't, don't let the enemy try and lie to you and remind you of your past. Say, no, I'm looking to Jesus. Because of him, I have this, this place that, that I can confidently come before the Lord and his grace is with me. And I know I'm accepted. I know that he calls me his child. He calls you his child. He calls you his son or his daughter. You're accepted. You're valued. Jesus did this. He made this to be so by his perfect life and perfect death on the cross. So when we come before the communion, this is what our hearts are to remember. He says, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread and remember what it's done for you? You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was great. The same way he said he took the cup and he reminded the disciples and he reminded us. He says, 
accused of rape gets thrown in prison again, like you're like, really, Lord? How much worse can this get? And then you're in there, and all of a sudden you interpret dreams for two guys. One of them gets killed, the other one gets reposed. Hey, remember me. I'm in this jail. Remember me. I'm in the pit with you. Remember me. You're set free. I helped you get out of here. Remember me. How many of you guys have been there? Remember me. Remember me, right? Two years past, finally comes out and interprets a dream. He gets put in a position of authority. Saves this nation. Not only that, because of what his family did, or evil thing, if we got rid of this promise, kid. God says, I am with you and will use it for good. Even though our families or our friends or jobs or whatever's happening to us, God is with you. Don't ever forget that. I had to understand that. I don't know how many times I've been in jail. I don't know how many times I've been in prison. I didn't tell what time I've been on my life. I go, we may be free, but inside we're in the prison, families, friends, finances, health, whatever it is, we're in our personal prison. Prison, and God says, I am with you because the end result is this. Whatever the world uses for evil, God will make it for good. Because who are we? We are children of God. And one thing I'm telling you this. Is who does our family come to in a time of need? Jesus, what a powerful name it is. I'm going to make you pay for selling me out. But all right, all right. All right, I'll pray for you. We'll read for the Lord. And through that salvation, because Joseph was able to save his family through the famine and still remind him, hey, we got five more years of this coming up. Come with me to my kingdom. And I'll give you the best. We'll get through this together. And through people like Joseph, through people like you, through people who are standing in the gap, we're in a pit. We are in prison. You might as well figure that one out. But God is with you. He is with you. And I thank you, Lord, because the Bible is a book that just keeps on giving. Keeps on giving. Yeah, I don't care. Huh? I mean, I've, I've been to that story before, and it's just like giving like a conversion. And I listen to it. And I just want to encourage you, as dark as it might be, as ugly as it might be, and you don't understand what's happening, Joseph was put in his bed, and God can do it. So, Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for this family. I thank you for everyone that's suffering, dear Father, so we cannot let it go. We will learn from the rule. Blessed by it, so Father, so I pray that you each and every family. Encourage them, to Father, for this is a tough world. But God, I'd rather go through this tough world with you next to me, guiding me, delivering me from all these problems that we have. I thank you, Lord, and I thank you for your blessing. And bless everyone. In Jesus' name. Just to the fact that humility that you're talking about, Cindy, you and Abraham, right? This is God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. He gives you grace. You know, that, that you know, but trust the Lord in that, that Lord, we cry out to you and you do hear us and you do respond.